So here in part four of our website speed series of blog posts, we're going to go ahead and actually look at a real live website and analyze what might be making it run too slowly. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at Pingdom speed test tools as they are excellent. So we're just going to go to a Google window here and you can see tools.pingdom.com. Their speed test comes up. Now, obviously, with, with three other blog posts that we discussed before that had the background to this that I'm not going to go over now for the sake of the people who have gone through all three of them. So this video assumes that you've read the other three um, blog posts, but if you haven't, you could probably still follow along. So basically, I'm going to want you to type in your website, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a website that I know has a problem so I can show you how it works. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is it depends on how fast, see it's testing from the Netherlands, you can actually change settings where it comes from. You know, what you're going to find is that the reason we tell you to say to have your website hosted in the same country that you are running your website is, is because things just go faster. So if you have a website that is tailored to, let's say, to Japanese people that's hosted in Florida and the majority of users in Japan, it would make sense to host it in Japan so the signal doesn't have to travel to Florida and back. Now, taking a look here, a lot of this, you know, the 5.6 seconds, page size is what makes a difference. I like to have a page size under a megabyte if possible. I can live with 1.5. Request is less important and the performance grade is relative. But this load time of 5.16 seconds isn't so hot. So let's come again here and see if we can test from New York City. And we had 5.16 seconds. Let's take a look and see. Now, certain things can vary your the server at the second that I'm hitting the server right now. You know, the joke is at noon on the East Coast, your internet speed goes down. That's when California wakes up. So if you're going to hit this thing at not, say here the load time is now 2.99 seconds. So there is some variation and that distance makes a difference. But if you take a look a few times, iterations, you'll, you'll get a good idea. But what I want to look at here is let's look at the page analysis first. So forget about these things. What I want you to see is time spent per content type. And as we're looking here, 60, almost 70% of the loading time is images. Scripts, you can't change that. You can talk to your developer about it's possible. You know, images, I don't know why it's showing that again. And scripts again. I'm not sure why there's two, um, but okay. The point is that images are taking up. So what images we can fix? And here, you know, there's some wait time here. That depends on your server. But if you're getting consistently good results, for example, here, you know, 2.99, 3.0, like that, and it's consistent, then I'm not concerned. So. Again, but the key here is saying, uh-oh, we've got some images. And does it give us something more down here? Yeah. So a megabyte. Okay, look at that. So, you know, we have, what do we say? This is 1.8 megs. It was 1.5 before. So the majority of your page loading here is the image. So what can we do to reduce that image size? Because if we reduce the image size, we reduce the page size, which hopefully reduces the load time. Let's take a look at the waterfall. And over here, let's sort by file size. Now let's take a look. Okay, so check this out here. The header background, this is 76 kilobytes. Now it might not seem like a lot, but on 1.8 megs, you know, if it's, if it's two megs, it's almost 50%. So, um, you know, if it's 100 megs, it's ten, so you get the idea. But the point is, is that if, if this were a meg, this would be, you know, 10%. So at two megs, it's 5%, which is a lot. So let's take a look at the, just, I'm gonna open this in a new tab so you can see it. Now, that's a very simple background that, in my opinion, does not need to be 76 kilobytes. You could probably make that 30, you know, depending on our resolution. This is straightforward. And the other thing is, remember, this is the banner that's on every single page. It's one thing if you have a, um, an image on a page that's on one page. You know, your implants page, you have a huge implant image or whatnot. I can live with that. But the key here is that this header's on every page. Let's take a look and see what this is. It's, it's 500 megs. This is just an ad, but 500 megs, excuse me. It's um, 600 kilobytes. That's a lot. And again, their, their advertiser might say, listen, it's 600 kilobytes and that's too bad. I mean, the, the quality is grainy, but again, who cares? It's an ad and it's kind of almost expected on an ad. But what I would tell you here is that's a ton. Let's call it 1.5. A third of this page load time is just coming from that image itself. And so now we have to say, you know, how much faster would this be? How much better is our user experience if we get rid of that, or if we modify it. What's this gala banner? And again, I don't know what this is, I'm just looking. So yeah, that's a banner that they're making an advertisement for, that's fine. But my question for you is, 
Does it have to be 40 kilobytes? Could you make it smaller? So at that point, that's you know pretty much a decent size, and I'm not really concerned about going after these other ones. So let's now take a look at my website. And let's make a test now. And let's get rid of these in the meantime. So you can see here, 1.69 seconds with a page size of almost you know, basically 400 kilobytes, which is perfect. Let's look at our file size. And you can see here, um, this is from my CDN, so it's combined because I don't want to get into that. But here's from add this is 22 kilobytes. Again, more from my content network. But you can see here, everything is small. And that's, that's the whole point. Let's look at the page analysis. So my images are 20, it's tiny. Think about the other website. So basically what's happening is I've done a pretty good job minimizing my images. Only 100 kilobytes worth of images on here. And it's, see, and it's seeing where are things coming from from certain domains. Just the Google Analytics code is giving me 16 and a half kilobytes. You know, 200 from my content delivery network. So you can basically see though, where, you know, add this is 100 kilobytes, you know. If I don't really use add this a lot, which I really don't, but I could shave off 100 kilobytes. So the point is, I want you to run this test for your site. I then want you to take a look at this waterfall under file size to see if there's any sore thumbs. Here, there are no sore thumbs. And again, under your page analysis, take a look and see what percentage is script and what percentage is image. And I don't expect you to play with the script stuff. A lot of the scripts you can't help, but you can minimize your CSS or minify it. But what I would say is take a look at this, double check your site, you can do it yourself, and then pass those um, results on to your web developer. And here's this one, and this one isn't working. But I encourage you to try webpagetest.org and take a look at that, and it will give you some interesting ideas about load time and first byte, and if there's enough uh, desire, we can go ahead and I can make a separate tutorial about this. But it's going to give you similar information, so you feel free to check that one out. Thanks.